Okay, so it looks like uh, most people are here, the numbers are leveling off, so I will uh, get cracking. So first of all, welcome, thanks for joining today. Uh, my name is Val Gilbert, I'm Technical Marketing Manager at Allen & Heath. Uh, so today we are going to be talking about how uh, end users, integrators and installers can maximise uh, their way of deploying uh, I.O. Um, and we're going to focus specifically on Dante offerings and uh, the Dante options from Allen and Heath. Um, so we've been here for a couple of day, days now offering this virtual conference and, and we have received quite a few um, requests for registration for one-to-one -one sessions. Do excuse me, uh, barking dog outside. Um, so uh, we are taking one-to-one -one sessions for people to um, talk to one of our team and for us to put you in touch with your local distributor. If that's something uh, that's interesting for you, don't hesitate to jump on the same uh, page that you used for registering, uh, registering for our webinars um, and you can enter your details and we will put you in touch with your local distributor or uh, with us directly and we'll talk with you uh, about your projects, any questions that you might have uh, further down the line. So don't hesitate to do that. Uh, finally, we have another session from uh, my colleague Samantha who will be talking about uh, AHM uh, as a matrix mixer and all the power and possibilities that that offers just after this session. Uh, and then we have a hangout uh, with all the members that have been uh, presenting during the last few days um, for you to ask any questions that you might have. And it might be on a completely different topic um, regarding Alan Heath or just general uh, integration and install technology and things that you're wondering about. So uh, don't hesitate to join that um, as well towards the end of today. So. Let's get on to our topic of today. So uh, how we can use uh, Dante and everything I owe, the Alan Heath family of boxes, um, to maximize the way we distribute our audio. We're going to overview a few technical details, but not too much. Uh, and then we look at some um, specifics in terms of the different boxes we have and a couple of case examples as well. Of course, we have time at the end for some questions and for us to get back to you on, on any queries you might have. Um, but please don't hesitate to pop any questions in during the webinar. You don't have to wait to the end. Um, and if we can get back to you during the webinar, we will um, or we'll keep those to the end. But um, the earlier you ask questions, the more time it gives us to come up with a really accurate answer for you. So um, please don't hesitate to pop your questions into the Q&A box that you have uh, at the bottom of your screens. So let's progress. So first of all, we're talking about everything I owe today. And for people who are familiar with Alan Heath, they know what everything I owe is. Um, but for people that are new to Alan Heath, you might not know exactly what that concept is. So I just want to talk you through uh, what is everything I owe. So everything I owe uh, is essentially a family name we have given to all of our IO boxes uh, that are compatible with our digital mixes with Alan and Heath. Now, um, the original Everything I.O. family are dedicated I.O. boxes, um, which is a very comprehensive range. There's a, a box for every sort of application, um, and they all feature Allen Heath proprietary protocols, which means that we've developed our own um, um, digital audio protocols that allow us to transmit audio uh, between our mixing systems and our I.O. boxes um, with a certain amount of features. Now, the main features are that you will find boxes that are either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz um, in terms of sample rates. Um, they offer, as I mentioned, Allen Heath's proprietary protocols, um, and they offer auto matching firmware. And without going into too much detail, because it has been mentioned in some of the other webinars over the last couple of days, uh, essentially auto matching firmware means that when you connect an Allen Heath box to an Allen Heath mixer, um, it automatically recognizes the firmware and the mixer will update or downgrade the firmware immediately so that the box is fully compatible and ready to work. And it does that in a matter of seconds. So you plug the box in, by the time you stand up and walk back to the mixer or to your computer, that box is updated and ready to talk. And, and like I said, it does it both ways, upgrade and downgrade. So very transparent and easy for the end user and really practical as well. If you're swapping out boxes in an installation um, and you know, you've got a, a shelf, that, uh, sorry, uh, I.O. box that's coming out of, of storage that might be on a much lower firmware. You don't have to worry about firmware at all. You literally plug it in and in a few seconds, it's good to go. So really nice and uh, practical. Now, all of the Allen Heath Everything I.O. boxes 
uh, have been designed with touring in mind. So they are very rugged, very well built and extremely uh, resistant to whatever environment they might be deployed in. But as they are very suitable for integration and installation applications, uh, they do come with installation hardware as well. So all of the boxes have uh, rack mount kits where need be, uh, and we'll have a look at those as well. So as I mentioned, there's a whole range. This is just a few examples uh, with the AR2412, which is a 48 kilohertz, a 24 input, 12 output box. Um, the um, DX012, which is a 12 uh, analog output, analog and AES digital if you want to. Um, the DX164W, which is a wall mount box. Um, the GX4816, uh, which is a 48 input, 16 output rack mount uh, box as well. And finally, the DX68, um, which is a kind of mobile uh, box with big rubber feet that you can put down. But as I mentioned, it does have a rack mount kit if you want to rack mount it in a, in a, in a stage rack, for example, or maybe in a server room, there's a rack mount kit for that as well. Now, today's focus is more on Dante, so I'm not gonna spend much more on uh, the Allen Heath Propriety Protocol uh, family of boxes. But if you do want to know more um, about those proprietary protocol boxes, uh, jump onto our website, allen-heath.com forward slash everything IO. Uh, and here you have a really nice uh, web page that offers you um, a simple matrix solution where you click on one of our digital mixers and it will automatically show you which boxes are compatible with that digital mixer. So uh, a really nice way and a simple way if, if you're not familiar with um, our different mixers and the, and the um, compatible boxes uh, to show which boxes work with which mixers. So uh, a good tip for you to jump on there. So that's an overview of, um, of those boxes, but um, today I want to talk about something a little bit different. And, and because the integration environment uh, is an environment that really requires a lot of flexibility in terms of how we can share digital audio. Um, often in integration, we need to uh, communicate with third party devices, other manufacturers equipment or pieces of software. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense for us to offer um, IO possibilities that allow us to share audio between different devices um, and different manufacturers. And, and for us, it's important for us to choose an industry standard protocol um, that everyone can use and uh, is familiar with. So everything IO has continued to grow um, over the past couple of years uh, to include Dante uh, boxes and Dante option cards as well for the digital mixers. So let's talk a little bit more about Dante. So Dante isn't an Allen Heath protocol. It's not something that we designed. Uh, it's designed by an Australian company called Ordinate. So it's what we call a third party protocol because it's not developed by us. Um, but they quite rightly came to the conclusion some years ago, and that's actually quite a long time ago now, that, um, that there was space for, uh, in digital audio, uh, there was space for a cross-platform um, protocol that many manufacturers could lean on uh, to integrate into their hardware and software solutions uh, that meant that everything could talk to everything else uh, in a digital world. In, in the analog world, that's relatively straightforward. You take an XLR or a jack lead and you send a line level feed into another box. But nowadays, as, as things move much more, have moved into a much more digital environment, uh, it, it was a good call to develop a platform where every manufacturer could use the same protocol and devices could talk to each other, uh, even if it wasn't being developed by the same manufacturer. So that's kind of where Dante came from. Now, some quick specifications, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna do a full Dante training today. That's not the purpose of, of this webinar, um, but essentially what is Dante? It's uh, a networkable audio over IP protocol. So it, we're, we're using IP technology uh, to distribute audio over a network. And, and when I say network, I mean it in both senses of the term, both in terms of technical term, it was, it's a, you know, uh, uh, an IT network, but also in terms of the physical network, we're networking, we're creating a network of devices all connected to each other. And we're doing that over IP technology. Now, what's smart about using audio over IP uh, is that we can use existing infrastructure. And, and again, I mean that in both ways. It means that we can use 
um, existing technology, existing hardware. Dante allows us to use off the shelf network switches, cabling, et cetera, uh, to deploy all our devices in a network. But on top of that, Dante allows us to use existing um, um, network infrastructure that exists in buildings. So you can use your IT network in your building to distribute Dante Audio. Now, that hardware needs to comply with some specifications for it to be compatible, for it, for it to have the bandwidth and the, and the network switch configuration to uh, be able to work with Dante transparently and properly uh, and in a secure way. Um, but you can use standard off-the-shelf hardware to distribute Dante around a building. You know, maybe you don't have the possibility to completely reinstall a full IT infrastructure inside a building, and you might be able to piggyback on the existing IT network um, to, to develop your Dante network. Now, we're more and more often seeing that it goes the other way around. People are deploying uh, a whole set of high-level um, network infrastructure and hardware for Dante, and they happen to be plugging in a couple of printers or using it for an internal communication system, et cetera, uh, that way around rather than Dante picking back on the older IT network. But that's just, you know, how things are moving forwards over time. So that's how Dante works. We can use uh, standard IT network uh, protocols to distribute Dante over uh, a facility if we want to. Now, there are a couple of different ways Dante devices can connect to each other and can uh, uh, be um, connected together. So the first one is daisy chain. Now, daisy chain is, as the name says, uh, means we can connect uh, one unit to the next unit, and then all of the following units uh, connect to each other in a chain. Now, this is a really simple way of um, connecting devices together. However, it does have one major drawback. Uh, obviously, the main drawback of, the, of this is should any of these devices fail, or should you lose a connection between one of the devices, all of the following devices then lose their connection and lose their audio, obviously, because uh, you've, you've cut the single cable that's uh, relying or that the connection relies on, uh, or you've lost the first box and, and nothing can communicate um, thereon. So, you know, it's very simple, very straightforward, but it does come with a major drawback. Now, if I want to work in a more um, safe way, we can deploy Dante in star topology. Now, star topology, as the name says, means uh, we go from a central node, uh, which in this case will be a network switch, and we run a single cable to each device in a star. Um, and this means that each device is completely alone on the network. Um, and if this cable is uh, ruptured for any reason, then only this device is lost and everything else continues to work. So all in all, it's a much safer and more reliable configuration. And if we want to push this even further, uh, Star Topology allows us to set up in a redundant network where we can run primary cables and then secondary cables to each device. And now if there should be any failure, whether it's with the cables or with the network switch, for example, the secondary network takes over automatically without any dropout whatsoever. Uh, and you have completely um, continuous audio uh, and data traveling to all of your devices. So that's a really fairly straightforward overview of, of what Dante is and how it works. If you want to know more and if you want to learn more about Dante and how to deploy it, uh, the only thing I can recommend is for you to jump onto the Ordinate website um, and they have a very complete and thorough training program with levels one, two, and three that includes certification uh, that you can follow on their website for free. So uh, if you want to learn more about Dante and how to deploy it, definitely jump on there. And I think nowadays, uh, if you're not already skilled in Dante, uh, definitely something that uh, you should be looking into to increase your, your um, knowledge base. Okay, so we talked about Dante generally uh, as a kind of overview, and, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit how uh, Dante comes into the Allen and Heath world. So first, good to know that um, none of the analog, sorry, none of the digital mixers of Allen and Heath uh, are equipped with onboard Dante. There's no built-in Dante to any of our digital mixers. Uh, we chose the route of fitting our uh, digital mixing systems with option cards. That means that if you don't want to use Dante because you don't need it, you don't have to pay for it. You can choose the option card uh, that suits your your uh, integration 
uh, more appropriately um, and you can choose different option cards. But we're talking about Dante today, so we're going to talk about the Dante option cards. Now, the first card is the SQ Dante card. Now, the SQ Dante card fits into the SQ digital mixing range. So that's SQ5, 6, and 7. It's the same card for all three digital mixers. And it also fits into the AHM64 digital uh, matrix mixer. Now, um, both of these mixing systems are 96 kilohertz mixing systems. So the processing inside them happens at 96K uh, kilohertz full time. However, the Dante card itself, uh, which is a 64 by 64 uh, channel card, uh, can run at 96 kilohertz or at 48 kilohertz. Now, it has an onboard sample rate conversion. That means that your mixing system, your SQ or your AHM, uh, continues to run at 96 kilohertz full time. You don't have to change the, the um, sample rate of the processing in your mixer to match your Dante network. So that's really practical. What that means is that you can integrate uh, the SQ Dante card into a, a bigger Dante environment and say you might have some amplifiers that are Dante amplifiers that run at 48 kilohertz. You can switch the Dante card to 48 kilohertz using uh, Ordinate Dante controller. Um, and then your entire Dante network will run at 48 kilohertz without compromise, compromising the, uh, the uh, processing quality of the Allen Heath digital mixer. What's really nice as well with the SQ Dante card is, as I mentioned, it's a 64 by 64 channel card, uh, and it runs at 96 kilohertz or at 48 kilohertz with no compromise to channel count. So it's 64 channels at 48 kilohertz and it's 64 channels at 96 kilohertz. There are some devices that uh, half the channel count when you change the sample rate. That's not the case with uh, any of the Dante cards at Allen Heath. Okay, the next Dante cards are the Dante 128 and the Dante 64 cards. And these are for DLive and Avantis. Pretty much the same specs, uh, not much difference here. So they run at 96 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, again, with onboard sample rate conversions. Um, so this allows us to integrate DLive and Advantis into the Everything IO Dante boxes, but also to, um, to uh, any other uh, Dante devices that you might want to use in, uh, in your network, okay? Finally, and this is a slightly older generation Dante card that's been around for a little while at Allen Heath, is the M Dante card. Now, the reason I show the M Dante card is the M Dante card is compatible with the MEU uh, hub for the ME personal monitoring system. Uh, now, the ME personal monitoring system, if you're not uh, fully aware of it, is a, a system where you give each person, whether that's a musician or a, or a, a speaker, uh, their own um, ME uh, unit here and they can set their own levels by themselves uh, on stage or, or wherever they might be and the MEU uh, is a, a PoE uh, network switch distribution device for the ME personal monitoring system so you can plug uh, one ME unit into each port now because we can fit the M Dante card into the uh, MEU hub uh, it means that we can offer ME personal monitoring, even if you're not using an Allen Heath mixer. So if you're using a third party uh, digital mixer, you can send 40 channels of audio over Dante into the, the uh, MeU hub uh, and then distribute it to the ME personal mixing system, which is a, a really great advantage if you're uh, working on a progressive upgrade of the system that might be a house of worship or a, or a, um, a school or something where they use personal monitoring system. Uh, it means you can start with the ME personal mixing system uh, using Dante and then, you know, maybe upgrade your digital mixers to Alan Heath later down the line. Now, the only thing to know about the ME, uh, sorry, the M Dante card is that it only runs at 48 kilohertz. But apart from that, uh, pretty straightforward. So we've got an option card for the vast majority of Allen Heath digital mixers uh, to use Dante, but what about input and output uh, boxes? So let's take a look at that. So in 2019, Allen Heath uh, revealed the first two Dante enabled uh, Everything IO boxes, the DT16-4W and DT16-8. Now these are pretty straightforward as the name says, there's a 16 input, four output, wall mount uh, Dante expander and a DT16-8, which is a 16 in, eight out uh, audio expander. I'll go over the specs of those very briefly. I don't want to spend too much time talking about um, pure specs, 
Um, but like I said, 16 in, 8 out, and this runs at 96 kilohertz. But it can run at 48 kilohertz if you need to integrate it with a 48 kilohertz Dante network. It's a portable stage box design, so you can move it around and, and drop it on a stage anywhere you like. Uh, but as I mentioned, it does come with a, a 19 inch rack mount kit if you want to put it into a server room or something like that. Uh, on the side of it, you've got its uh, IEC for power supply, and then you have two connectors and you can run this in um, daisy chain, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, or a primary and a secondary uh, backup cable if you want to. Okay. The DT164W, so this is designed to be a wall mount box, 16 in, four out. Again, this can run at 96 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz to integrate with any Dante environment. Um, primary, secondary ports on the rear with Ethercon uh, locking connectors that can run in uh, redundant or daisy chain mode if you want to. And the specificity of this uh, is that we offer it with three power supply options. So uh, you can have an IEC cable, which will take anything from 100 to 230 uh, volts for it to be usable anywhere around the world. Um, but we can also use a 12 volt uh, DC connection on the back with like a wall walk connector, or there's delivered in the box, a little cable gland box uh, to offer a hardwired uh, cable in the rear. So depending on your uh, integration project, sometimes there are some uh, restrictions on the way things are specified and what you're allowed to run in terms of power supply, uh, there's an option uh, for any of those limitations that you might have. Uh, the 164W fits practically inside a 12 by 12 inch NEMA box, which is standard uh, wall mount electrical boxes. Uh, but there's also an ACE backstage, which is a brand of um, uh, metal hardware, uh, a stage pocket box. So it's a box that can go into a stage with a lid that you can open and the 164W is inside as well. So that's the 164W. Um, a small note on both of those devices, the DT168 and the DT164W, uh, they are both AES67 compatible um, and they are both DDM ready. So Dante Domain Manager ready. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with Dante Domain Manager, um, Jeff Hawley uh, spoke with uh, Bernie Farkas from Ordinate uh, in one of the sessions this week. Uh, that'll be available on YouTube fairly shortly, and they go into detail of what you can do with Dante Domain Manager. But uh, very briefly to explain what it does is that it allows you in much larger format integrations of Dante to segregate or subdivide um, more local Dante networks into a much bigger project. So you could have uh, four rooms, for example, each with their own Dante configuration. Uh, and those can be completely independent from each other in terms of what people can access in each room. So each room only sees that specific room, but an administrator can access the network and see the entire network, all of the rooms together as a single whole network, uh, and then allows him to patch feeds from one room to the other, for example, as an administrator, uh, which other people wouldn't necessarily be able to do. And that's managed by Dante Domain Manager. Uh, so that's what segregates and offers security between the different um, parts or different domains uh, within a single Dante network. So uh, that's Dante Domain Manager and plenty of info on that on the Ordinate website again. So a quick example of how we can deploy uh, DT168 and 164Ws. So this is a fairly straightforward uh, example with Dante uh, DT168 boxes and two SQ5s. Now this might be a small school auditorium with a front and house and monitor mix, or maybe a radio um, broadcast stream somewhere else, or, or it might be a small uh, house of worship installation as well. Now what's nice here is that we've got a Dante card in each SQ5 mixer. Um, and then all of the boxes are daisy chained together and each mixer uh, can see all of the inputs and outputs of every single box. Now, where this is even more uh, flexible is that we could easily connect a laptop to uh, one of the network ports uh, in the Dante network and multi-track record or playback all of the feeds or connect another mixer for a specific broadcast mix or something like that. So the, the um, one of the main benefits of Dante is being able to tap into the network and extract the audio inputs and outputs at any location at any given time. 
Here's a slightly more complex, um, but at the same time, very flexible installation. Um, and this is a, an example of a church where we might have three locations within that church um, with their own uh, DT164W warm out box for uh, analog inputs and outputs. Um, and each room has its own IP controller, which is an IP1 wall mount controller, which allows each room to uh, select their input source and manage uh, the level in that room, for example. This is all being connected to a single network switch as a central node. So this is getting all of the Dante information and it's also getting all of the control information from the IP wall controllers. And this is all being fed to a DLive DM0 mix rack, which is managing all of the processing and all of the mixing uh, for the distribution and the processing of all of this audio inside this church. Now, uh, on weekends or on specific occasions, they have two mobile mixing systems, which are based around an SQ5 console. Um, and each of these mixing consoles is connected using a DX16.8, which is the Allen Heath protocol based boxes uh, connected to the mixer. And they can tap into the Dante network whenever they like, just by plugging in the SQ Dante card into the network switch. And they can receive audio from any of the boxes or send audio uh, from their mix to any of the boxes uh, out of the analog uh, line outputs. The last thing I want to talk about uh, on this example specifically is a really nice function that you have with Allen Heath mixtures, which is the tie line function. The tie line function is something we introduced, uh, which allows you to take any physical input and send it to any physical output without running through any of the processing of any of the digital mixers themselves. So it's the equivalent of running a physical XLR cable from one location to another cable, uh, location and connecting something to the each end of that XLR. So I might want to uh, have a room here where I have a little uh, shout loudspeaker where you can make uh, announcements, for example. It might be a cloakroom or a backstage area, for example. And we can plug a switch microphone into one of the inputs of this stage box here and without going through any of the mixing processing whatsoever, so it's independent from any muting or EQ or processing happening, all I need to do is open that microphone uh, on its switch and it will start coming out of that loudspeaker. So exactly as if I was running a cable from here to this location here, nice and practical. So as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, Everything I owe is uh, a family that can continues to grow with the introduction of dedicated Dante boxes. And I'm going to mention a couple of brand new Dante boxes that we have just released uh, this week. Uh, and they're really suited for install and integration applications. So these are the DT20, DT02 and DT22 um, uh, interfaces and audio breakout boxes really compact. These are about the size of a, of a slightly large DI box um, and they're really flexible and, um, and powerful, but at the same time, very rugged and well-built. When you've got these in your hands, you can see that they're uh, definitely not made of plastic. So let's have a quick look at these. These have been put online this week. Uh, and if it's something you're interested in, definitely talk to your local dealer or distributor and, and they'll happily talk you through uh, some more info about these boxes. First up is the DT20. So it's a two input uh, Dante interface. Again, this can run at 48 or 96 kilohertz sample rate. It offers two combi uh, inputs. So those can be mic inputs or line inputs. So you can hit those with uh, two jacks. It might be a PC um, line level feed, for example. These mic inputs uh, have a local gain on a, a little um, uh, manual rotary here, uh, and also phantom power for both uh, for both mic preamps as well. Now, what's nice with these boxes, and it's the same for all three of them, is they can be powered by a local power supply, uh, 12 volts, Woolwort style power supply, um, or you can power them over PoE, which is uh, power injected over ethernet. So that's either a network switch that can deliver PoE, uh, or you have PoE injectors. This means that all you need to do is run a single um, network cable, plug it in, and that powers and gives you Dante audio uh, to that device. So nice and uh, flexible and easy to work with. 
Next up is the DT02, so same form factor in its size and shape, uh, except it's a two line level output, again, runs at 48 kilohertz, uh, and the same deal when it comes to powering it as well. So you can run it from a 12 volt power supply or using a PoE power over ethernet. Finally, the DT22. Now the DT22 is kind of the powerhouse of the trio. Um, it does offer two inputs and two outputs on Phoenix terminal block connectors. This means that you can connect some loose cables, you know, breakout cables to XLRs in and out, but if you want to, uh, but you could hardwire it into a lectern stand, for example, and have uh, your lectern microphone hardwired into this directly, um, or you could have it uh, in a ceiling or something like that, hardwired into some uh, local speakers. Um, lots of different options, or you could uh, hardwire into a patch panel, for example, if you wanted to. Uh, again, PoE for power supply, uh, 12 volts uh, local power supply as well over DC. Uh, and obviously this still has uh, small rotary gains for uh, set and forget gain values, uh, as well as the possibility to activate uh, phantom power too. Now, all three of these units uh, offer really practical rack mount solutions. So there are rack ears for mounting one or two devices in a single one U rack. Uh, but we also have these really neat uh, surface mount ears as well. So you can uh, screw them underneath a desk, for example, uh, or like I said, onto a lectern podium, maybe to a, a roof um, panel for uh, having them, you know, uh, behind a, uh, a floating roof uh, to connect loudspeakers. So really practical, really compact, um, but very well built, definitely. So a quick example of how uh, we could deploy some uh, DT uh, boxes. So here I've got three uh, lecture theatres in an education environment, uh, a canteen area and a reception area. Uh, all of this audio is being managed by an AHM64 digital matrix mixer. This matrix mixer is receiving a fire alarm uh, control panel over GPIO. So if there was to be a fire alarm, all of the inputs will be uh, attenuated and priority will be given to another to the fire alarm to be uh, um, uh, fed into the loudspeakers everywhere across the facility. Um, it's all connected to a single network switch. This network switch takes all of the Dante information to all of the room, but it also takes all of the control data from the IP controller uh, in each room to manage source selection and level. Now the three uh, lecture theaters have a DT22 fitted inside them. Uh, this offers inputs from local microphones to be fed into the Dante network um, and outputs to be fed to the local speakers in each room. Finally, we have a canteen. Now in the canteen, there aren't many speeches going on, so uh, they only have some loudspeakers. And for this, we're using a DT02, so outputs only is all we need. Uh, so a DT02 is, is uh, set up in here with loudspeaker, with, um, connected to the speaker, sorry, uh, for any outgoing audio. Finally, in the reception area, we have the DT20, where she has a paging microphone connected to the inputs, uh, and she's using a custom, uh, the person is using a custom control app um, to uh, trigger the paging mic into different uh, rooms or to the entire facility if need be. Uh, so that's a really nice, uh, fairly straightforward, compact, uh, but really well suited application for these DT2202 and 20 boxes where you have uh, exactly the channel count that you need. Now, just to finish off before I take some of your questions, uh, I just wanted to compare DT and DX. We did talk about uh, the Allen Heath protocol boxes in the beginning, uh, and then we spent the rest of the, uh, the time talking about uh, the Dante options available with Allen Heath as well. So I wanted to briefly compare the two and none of them, neither are better or worse than the other, but they might be differently suited for your application or for your use. Uh, so it's worth understanding the difference between the two and which one might be the better uh, option for you. Now with Dante, uh, we obviously have the flex flexibility of it being an industry standard protocol that you can integrate very easily uh, into Dan any Dante network that you might be working with. So you can um, connect it to other Dante devices from any manufacturer, uh, thanks to Dante technology. So uh, it is fully networkable uh, because of the way we discuss the topology. So star topology or, or daisy chain, it's very easy to deploy many, many boxes across a facility. Um, and I might want uh, a mix of the two. So I might do some daisy chain and some 
start topology as well um, so that I can cover my entire um, facility in a very um, easy way. Um, the way you can patch things is extremely flexible. So thanks to Dante Controller, um, I can patch audio from any Dante input to any, any uh, Dante output very easily using Dante Controller. Um, so it's very flexible in that sense. And we can also, as I mentioned, tap into that system if I want to record, for example, a laptop running Dante Virtual Sound Card, connect to any of the network switches, and I can extract audio and record it um, very easily. Now, any patching that I do do stays with the physical unit. So if I'm using a Dante uh, DT16-8 box, for example, uh, connected to a network switch and I patch the Dante inputs from that box to a digital mixer, if I unplug that box and move to a different network switch somewhere else in the building, that box will remain patched to the same channels on the same mixer wherever I plug it into the Dante network because it's uh, the Dante patch is linked to the unit itself and not to the location where it's plugged in. Finally, uh, the Dante version means that we can truly split from any of the IO boxes to multiple uh, mixers at any given time. So I can have one Dante box feeding one or two or three or four digital mixers at the same time, and they all have access to the same input audio. Now, DX and um, GX and GigaRace and all of the Allen Heath protocol boxes offer some other advantages, which are different, but just as valuable depending on your application. So first of all, it's plug and play. So you don't need to configure any network switches. You don't need to configure IP addresses or anything like that. Plug it in. It automatically matches the firmware with the firmware of the mixer, and you're good to go, uh, ready to start passing audio. Finally, patching and settings uh, matches the port where you connect the uh, box into. So if I plug a DX box into DX port one, that box will always feed into those channels of that DX port. So there's no uh, changing of patching if I change boxes. That's really practical because it means if I need to swap out a box for any reason, I can unplug it, plug a new box in, and those channels stay in the same channels on the digital mixer. So really practical in that sense. Also practical for other applications like um, live events. Um, I can have um, a DX box with all of my inputs plugged in and I can take that DX box away maybe with a certain uh, set in a theater, bring a new set in, plug in a new DX box and it remains patched to the same input channels uh, that I had the first box connected to, which is different to the way Dante works. Finally, because it's an Allen Heath protocol, uh, we have fixed latency on all of our boxes. So uh, in uh, the input of a DX box to a digital mixer, uh, the latency is extremely low. Uh, it's a few microseconds. So substantially lower than you will have with Dante, but um, Dante um, latency is, is higher and something to take into account. So hopefully that uh, gives you an idea of why you might use DX or why you might use uh, Dante boxes. Um, and at this point, I will um, happily take any of your questions. Now, um, I've got my colleague Nick here who's going to take any of your questions and pass them to me. Um, while you have a chance to type your questions in, again, I just want to remind you that um, if uh, what I've been discussing today is interesting to any of your projects uh, or anything that you might be considering in the future, don't hesitate to uh, have a look at the All Install event page and put in your details and we'll happily organize a one-on-one -on -one, uh, call with you uh, to discuss any of your upcoming projects. Um, so, Nick, do you have any uh, questions come in for me over what we've discussed, or, or maybe anything else for that matter? Yeah, thank you, Val. There are a couple here, and uh, I would also encourage everyone um, to uh, just click on the Q and A uh, button and uh, and type in any question they might have while we are online. And before we start with the questions. Uh, just worth showing that uh, we do have a couple of the DT boxes here. Uh, in fact, we did attempt to send one or two to Val uh, in France, but international shipping at the moment is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, this is the DT20. Uh, you can see how compact uh, the box is, it's, as, as Val said, a sort of DI sized uh, and the Ethicon connector on the back. And I have the DT22, the Phoenix version, which is even even smaller, uh, it's a little bit shallower. And again, you can see uh, the chassis and the design. Uh, now, uh, on to some of the questions. 
Uh, there is one about uh, sample rates in a Dante system, Val, and uh, particularly um, the fact that our devices uh, are always a 96K, but the cards can take 48K or 96, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Do you know if you can mix those sample rates in a Dante system at all? Uh, no. So within a Dante network, all of the devices need to be running at the same sample rate. So you can't mix uh, mix together. So if you have even one device that's running at 48 kilohertz within the Dante network, uh, everything else has to follow suit. Uh, now, again, maybe just I want to make sure that it's completely clear. Um, SQ, AHM, DLive, Avantis are all 96 kilohertz digital processing in, in terms of sample rate inside the mixer. So even if you run your Dante card inside your mixer at 48 kilohertz, uh, thanks to the sample rate conversion that's available on each of our Dante cards, uh, the processing in the mixer continues at 96 kilohertz at all time. So hopefully that, that clears up that question. Yeah, and, and presumably you can fit multiple Dante cards if you wanted in a D-Live, for example, and, and run point. one at 96K for recording and one at 48K for other yeah, purposes. Good, good good point, absolutely. So in D-Live and Avantis, you can, uh, of course, fit multiple Dante cards if you wanted to. So if you want to have uh, all of your I.O., um, running at uh, 96 kilohertz and maybe even your amplifiers and everything else is running at 96 kilohertz. Uh, you can have that entire network running at 96 kilohertz, uh, but you want to do a recording at 48 kilohertz over Dante, uh, then you could fit a second card running at 48 kilohertz and, and gain some channel count and lower the size of your files that you're going to record onto your uh, DAW over Dante, for example. But you can absolutely yeah fit two cards. Uh, that's probably the the easiest route to multiple sample rates if you need to. Thanks. Uh, there is a question about the uh, the control network and how that differs from the Dante audio network. Uh, you did mention the uh, the control network switch on the Dante cards. Uh, the question is about where would you recommend to bridge together the control and Dante networks and where uh, should they stay separate? Uh, well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, and if I just bring up uh, this example again here, um, it, it, in this case, uh, you can see that they've run all of the IP controllers um, into the network switch um, and all of the Dante devices into the network switch. And this picture is fairly vague in the sense that this could depict uh, two separate VLANs on the same network switch, one for uh, control data and one for Dante, but there's absolutely no reason to do so. You can absolutely combine the two on a single network switch and have the control data and the Dante data uh, working together at the same time. Um, what's nice with the uh, SQ Dante card in AHM, for example, but also the, sorry, just sliding through my, my presentation here. Um, where's it gone? There it is. Um, the uh, Dante cards for DLive and Avantis is that there is the um, network bridge switch on here, which actually integrates the control data with the Dante data uh, coming from the primary port. So um, I don't even need to bridge out of this card into the network port on the back of my DLive or my Avantis. Uh, it automatically tunnels inside the mixing console uh, so that I can share the control data with, with the mixer itself. Um, so really practical and I can run it all together at the same time. How would you go about setting up IP addresses in that case if you wanted uh, Dante and your uh, DLive director on the same uh, laptop? Sure, absolutely. The only thing is to make sure that you segregate IP addresses. So you have a set of IP addresses dedicated for your control network uh, and a set of IP addresses dedicated for your Dante devices. That's all. But other than that, uh, fairly straightforward and, and transparent. Okay, and I think the last question is uh, whether the DT preamp control app can control the preamps on the new DT20 and 22. Certainly, boxes. I didn't actually uh, mention the DT preamp control. So, DT preamp control is a is a fairly new piece of software that we uh, released fairly recently, uh, available for Mac and Windows PC, uh, and this allows us to control uh, the digital preamps on the uh, DT168 and DT164W Dante boxes without the presence of an Allen Heath digital mixer. So if I want to use uh, a DT16.8 box with, I don't know, an, an, another matrix mixer, for example, because um, I think that the performance of the boxes are exactly what I need, or I might even want to use it as, a, uh, as an audio interface, I could do that as well if I wanted to. Um, preamp control allows us to control 
microphone pre gains, uh, pad and uh, 48 volt phantom power on each of the, the preamp inputs. Now, this is not uh, compatible with the new DT20 and the DT22 boxes because they aren't digital uh, gain. So it's a manual uh, gain uh, rotary on the front panel. So obviously, uh, if it's a manual gain, we can't remote control it digitally. So uh, DT preamp control uh, is a really nice tool, but only for DT16.8 and 16.4W. Uh, very good. Thank you very much, Val. And uh, I'll leave you to end uh, the webinar. Thank you very much, Nick. So uh, again, I just want to say thank you very much to uh, everyone for joining. Uh, I hope you've had a, uh, a good session with me today. If you have any questions, either connect with us uh, with the one-to-one -one sessions or speak to your local distributor. Uh, and with that, I'll wish you an excellent uh, rest of your day or evening, wherever you might be. And I uh, hope to see you soon, maybe in a couple of hours in our uh, Hangout session where you can ask us pretty much anything you like about what's going on at Alan Heath. So uh, thank you very much and have a great day.